Hey guys, I'm Joe, founder of Crust Bros, award-winning uh, pizzeria over in Waterloo, London. I'm here today to introduce our brand new YouTube channel. Uh, we're gonna be doing over the next couple of weeks some amazing how-tos on how to make incredible pizza at home. Today, we're gonna start off with how to make an amazing dry yeast Neapolitan pizza. That's all ingredients that you should be able to get now. And it's gonna mean that you can replicate your Crust Bros from your very own kitchen. Let's do it. Let's talk about ingredients. We're going to start off here with our double zero flour. So this is amazing Italian flour. If you can't get a hold of this, then just some strong white bread flour will be okay. But this one is really great because it's a bit more forgiving. So if you're new to making pizza, you can stretch it uh, and it's going to not tear quite so much as strong white bread flour is. We're going to use a whole pack. That's one kilo because we're going to make a 1.65 kilo mix today. It's going to make about eight pizzas worth. Moving on to water, so we've got 650 mils of water. This is quite a lot, so a Neapolitan dough is quite a wet dough. Again, this is so it's super elastic, super stretchy, and just not as heavy as kind of what you might have thought sort of 10, 15 years ago pizza was all about. So in here, about 15 minutes ago, all I've done is taken one gram of one of those seven gram sachets. That sounds like very, very, very little yeast, but super important. Neapolitan dough is a slow-proof dough. Slow-proof dough is maximum on flavour. The texture is completely different. It's going to be loads easier to digest. Again, that same feeling of wanting to eat another pizza immediately after you finish your first one. What I've done, as I said, is pop that in, mix it by hand, just so it's kind of all incorporated, uh, and left it for 50 minutes, and that's begun to activate that yeast, and it's come to life. Lastly, we've got here 30 grams of salt. This is essential, this is bringing all the flavor to this dough. Without this, it's just not gonna be as good. Also, the quantities and proportions I've got means that the dough is gonna grow at the right rate. And when we use this dough tomorrow, it's gonna to be absolutely perfect for you guys to stretch and spread the pizza at home. Let's get mixing. our water and yeast mixture that's just going in as it says 650 mls the yeast will start to settle at the bottom of the pan it's really important that we just kind of mix that by hand and get all of that in because otherwise you're gonna have less yeast in your mix and it's not going to be as activated and behaving the way as you were expecting it to we're using one kilo of zero zero flour and we're going to put three quarters of that in now and then we're going to add the rest later that's just going to mean it's a little bit easier to mix Really important here as well, you're going to have seen some videos where people are telling you to mix this all on the table to make a volcano, tip in your water and yeast and start sort of working around with a fork. Biggest mistake I ever made, first time I made pizza, almost meant that I never made pizza again. I did that, started making it, the walls started breaking, walls collapsed and I ended up with smelly watery yeast mix all over my counter in every single drawer and that almost meant the crust bros never happened. Thankfully, I got back on it, and we are here making pizza today. Guys, I made these mistakes, so you don't have to. So let's begin mixing it. We're just gonna replicate mixer with our hands and begin incorporating. It's gonna get messy. It's gonna cling to your hands, that's fine. We can sort that out later. So as we're mixing, just make sure you're taking off any excess flour from around the outside of the bowl. Again, we've measured these ingredients out carefully to make sure that all the proportions are right. So if we're leaving any mix anywhere at any time, it's gonna change how this finished product ends up. Also really important to mention, we're keeping the salt away. Just move it away out of the shop. It's not going in, because if you add that in now, all it's gonna do is it's gonna kill your yeast and you're basically gonna come back 24 hours later, look at your dough and it's gonna be flat as a pancake and uh, that's a horrendous waste of time. So don't do that. So as we can see now, it's actually quite a, a sort of a wet mix, but it's begun to all kind of incorporate. I'm just gonna add the remainder of my flour. Now the flour is, is, is feeding the yeast. So the yeast is starting to eat on that. It's gonna, that's what creates our oxygen, which gives us our light dough. Final incorporation of this extra bit of flour. So now I'm gonna scatter in my salt. I'm gonna give it a nice uh, covering all over. It's just don't kind of just plunk it all in because that, uh, that way then you could end up with a bit of dough that's super salty and then the rest without it. So put half of it on top, half of it underneath. Final mix by hand and inside the bowl. And now at this stage, you're kind of ready to get it out on the countertop. You can see it's sort of all started to come together. Ready to get it out on our counter. 
and begin properly kneading it. At this stage, get yourself a big coffee, glass of water, get ready, get the guns out. 15 minutes of hard work coming up. Cool, let's do it. Quick tip at this stage, if your hands are covered with uh, kind of like sticky dough and it's annoying you, just take a look at the last bit of flour that's kind of in your pack, put it on one hand, and then just scrub your hands together. If you do this with water or at the sink, it's only going to get kind of more sticky and more messy. Start with clean hands and we are ready to mix. Why we're kneading this dough, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up the gluten inside of this dough just here. That's what gives it its elasticity. And it's also making sure that all the ingredients are properly mixed throughout the whole mix. As I said, the last thing you want is one pizza that's super salty and one pizza which is bland. So there's no, no excuses here. We have to get into the mix. We have to give it some hard work uh, or just chuck it, chuck it in a mixer for that point. So let's do it by hand. So now talking about how we need the dough. Start with it here on your table. The easiest way that I find to do it is take your strongest hand and effectively hold it with your weaker hand and push it out with your stronger one. You can see that's kind of ripping and tearing and eventually over time it will stop ripping and tearing and it will be one full piece, one, one piece that just won't break and that's when we're going to know that our dough is done. So, hold it with one hand, stretch it out, bring it back. Hold it with one hand, stretch it, push it, bring it back. Push it, bring it back. Push it, bring it back. You'll notice kind of bits of uh, dough that have kind of flaked off. And what we do is this is getting stickier and stickier. So what we're going to do is just use this to clean up the table. It means we don't waste any pizza. And back to mixing again. So we've got the beginnings of a dough. It's breaking a little bit and I can still kind of feel some clumps of flour in there. But it's really starting to incorporate. It's starting to build up that gluten. It's going to give us an incredible pizza. I don't actually know how long I've been mixing for. About five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> We're about 10 minutes into this mix here, so it's really started to come together. It's kind of getting a smoother texture on the top. That's one of the things that we're looking for to know that our dough is getting there. If you really think it's ready, what you want to do is just take a bit, and we're basically going to do the window pane test here. So you take it between four fingers, we stretch it. And you want to be able to, it needs to be at the point where you can see light through it. It's like the stained glass effect. You can see light through it without it tearing. Here you can see I've got a little bit of a tear. So I've got a couple of minutes more. It's not far off though, it is actually, you know, you can actually see through that. It's pretty good. A couple more minutes though, extra hard work, gonna pay dividends tomorrow when we cook this up. Cool, let's go. Okay guys, so we've got our finished dough just here. It's ready to go, it's ready for its first proof. If you like that video, please do hit like on the, on the underneath, the little thumbs up, and also subscribe, because we're gonna have loads more amazing content to come up. We're gonna take our pizza dough here, and we're gonna pop it in, in a box. We want this to go into something where it's got the ability to double in size. So you can see we've got more, that's about a third the size of this box. We just use an ice cream container. Um, and we want to make sure that this is airtight at this stage. We're going to take our lid, pop it on, and then we're good to go. Okay, so the last thing to talk about is how we're going to ferment this dough. So we're going to leave this for 24 hours now, at which stage it'll be ready to shape into dough balls. Uh, and a few hours after that, it'll be ready to make some pizza with. What we're going to do is we do a bulk ferment. So we've got it all together. And this is now going to sit outside of the fridge for one to two hours, depends how hot your room is. And you'll notice that it'll, it will kind of settle inside the box and it's just going to start to grow. At that stage, that's when we're taking it to the fridge. We're popping it in there for the next 24 hours. So it's gonna have a super slow proof. As I said, Neapolitan pizza is all about slow proving. Slow proving is the best texture and the best taste. And that's what kind of separates Neapolitan pizza from kind of your really fast proved uh, crappy pizza, basically. So, as I said, a couple of hours outside the fridge and then 24 hours inside the fridge and we're good to go.
take out adobal. So he's gonna take some flour and we just put that kind of in the dividing line there. So separate the adobal. And now we're gonna work that on the table. All right then, let's open the pizza. always brush off any excess flour on the table there. We want to keep as much flour from going inside the oven as possible because that can burn. And obviously we've got our wood-fired oven going today. We have started that at a lower temperature so we'd usually be cooking at 450 degrees cooking in sort of like 60 seconds something like that. Probably a little bit colder today so maybe around 300 just so we can show you kind of something you know easily replicable at home. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. One is you can pop a pizza stone in your oven, turn it up full whack, Get to this stage, open your pizza, tomato sauce on, and then onto your pizza stone. Pre-cook that and then mozzarella on after that, after it started to crisp up a little bit. Otherwise you'll find that the dough is a little bit too white and it kind of never, never develops another color. Again, video coming for that shortly. So subscribe, like, it's coming up soon. So we've got our dough. We're going on with some tomato sauce. So we just kind of work that out. Neapolitan pizza, we always want to leave a border. We try and leave about an inch because we are crust bros after all, and the crust is the best bit of the pizza. Now for margarita, pasta have basil. Great for color, but also amazing flavor as well. And then we just have some shredded mozzarella just here. And to finish, just some olive oil. Get it in the oven. Okay then guys, here we are. We have our finished margarita pizza. You can see if we check the crust, it's kind of springing back to life. You know there's plenty of air in there. That's why we take our time, 24 hours, to make the perfect margarita pizza. Let's eat. So you can see, nice airy crust, springing back beautifully. Amazing.